hear the cries of the broken from the rich and the poor I smell the fear of disease all around me I feel responsible now that I've seen because we all were born to live for more live more than this so I won't laugh like you love laugh like you love on the love of others the way that you love me I won't laugh like you love But the 
for it. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to this edition of Midday Matter. Midday Matter is a streaming ministry of Life Builders Church here in Baltimore. I'm your host, J. Charles Carrington Jr. And we're excited. We're excited. We're excited about the grace of God. Oh, beloved, y'all ready for this? I got to get into the word. Our time is limited. Amen. We only got a specified amount of time, so let's get in it. Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way today. Be glorified, be magnified. Take me out of self and use me for somebody else. This is indeed my prayer and my expectation that you would get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's yours. It won't be disturbed or touched by these hands. But Lord, no hands actually. But you receive it. All the glory, all the honor, all the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, hold up your Bibles, everybody. Y'all know the drill. Let's go. Lord, I thank you. Come on. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy of basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer but I'm also a doer and my life is so much better because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. Father, your word I had in my heart so I will not sin against you. Have your way today. Bless this time. Get the glory and I thank you. I declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted. But I will hear the word today. And as a result of what I hear today, I'm going to leave this environment better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to start a new series today. And beloved, before I start this series, this is part one of a series called uh, Having Kingdom Culture, How to Have Kingdom Culture in a godless society how to be kingdom cultured 
in a godless society. Now, before I start this series, I kind of want to give a pre-word, um, and I'm going to take my time with this particular part, because in this lesson, part 1A, let's might as well call it now, we want to deal with an issue before we get deeper into this study as we define kingdom and we define culture. That's lesson one, defining kingdom, defining culture. Now, when we talk about kingdom of God, and I'm going to probably repeat some of the things I'm going to say, but really we need to understand prior to talking about kingdom, lordship, lordship. I think that many of us that are believers, I do not stand as your judge. <clears throat> I do not stand as one on your jury. Matter of fact, you're not on trial by me. We're all fighting the same fight of faith. We're all laying hold to eternal life. But I think some of us have forgotten what lordship really is. You cannot talk about kingdom without talking about lordship. Now, when you were not walking with God and when you were in the world system, a lot of time we need to make sure we express that properly. When we say in the world, not of the world, we're not talking about the cosmos. We're not talking about the earth, not talking about the universe. We're talking about the system. When we were living by the world system, okay, we had a Lord. By default, there is no middle ground. You're either going to serve God or serve the will of the devil. There is no middle ground. There is no neutrality. And that's what I think many of us have forgotten somewhere along the line. With God, there's all or nothing. Now, can I go back and describe this? Jesus gave his all. When he died on the cross, some unfortunate cults say he died spiritually. No, he died physically. Jesus, the man, the son of God, died on that cross. He didn't give part he gave all. He didn't give some. He gave all. He didn't gave a little, give a little bit. He gave all. And um, when he gave all, he gave all as the son of God. He gave all as God in the flesh. There was nothing else. God gave his son. God gave all. Jesus, I think we forget, on that cross, he died as the son of God. He died to give his life. When he hung on that cross, he gave his life. Do, do you hear me? He didn't give a part of himself. He gave his all. And I think that many of us don't remind ourselves of the price that was paid for our redemption. Jesus gave his all. I'm reminded of two songs I'm not going to sing today if I can help it, but Thomas Whitfield, great composer, great writer very prominent in the late 70s, early 80s. Unfortunately, he went to be with the Lord, in my opinion, too early. But Thomas Whitfield wrote the song. In the words, he said, my debt was paid at Calvary because Jesus gave his all for me. And in singing that song, he just repeats the phrase, he gave his all. 
He gave his all. He gave his all for me. Now, there I say, I tell the truth, I am an apostle, and I want to make sure I clarify. An apostle is one that is sent with orders on assignment. I have the assignment as an apostle. Yes, I am a duly consecrated bishop. I was a presiding bishop over full gospel Christian fellowship started back in 1999, um, September. I was consecrated December 1999, December 3rd. And uh, I've consecrated bishops. I've uh, been a part of consecration of bishops and apostles. So I am a man of God. I've been preaching since 12 years old. License at 14. I don't say that to brag, but I do say what I'm saying to qualify the statement I'm going to make. Jesus gave his all. And in order for us to be able to call him Lord, it must be by the Holy Ghost. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says. Um, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love, you know, I'm nothing. There's a love that drew us that we need to reciprocate, that we need to appreciate, and that we are now, by the word of the Lord of 1 Corinthians 12, empowered to call Jesus Lord by the act of that love, which gave the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God in us. We have God, the Father, God, the Son, who is with us, Emmanuel. And we have the Holy Ghost, who is God in us. I know people say we're a tripartite being, and that's true without the Holy Ghost. There are three parts of us, body, soul, spirit. But when we receive the Holy Ghost, the paraclete, the one who lives in us, the one who leads and guides into all truth, doesn't take residence outside of us. He takes residence inside of us. The main purpose is so that we can understand the now lordship of Jesus Christ. Stay with me. Jesus is Lord. He's Lord when you dance. He's Lord when you finish dancing. He's Lord when you speak in tongues. He's Lord when you don't. He's Lord when you want him to be and Lord when you don't want him to be. He's Lord when we put our religion on the shelf and he's Lord when we pick it back up again. Jesus is Lord and nobody can call him Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So I want to make sure I say this because I don't want it to be misunderstood. Many of us deny him full lordship because we want to keep part of what we want and give him what we want. <laughs> Bishop Joseph Garlington, um, great man of God, I heard him say one day that uh, somebody came and wanting to be saved and said, I want the Holy Spirit but I, I don't want to fall out. And we were hearing him say this in a message. And uh, the person said, I want the Holy Spirit, but I, they were very dignified, very prim and proper. Nothing wrong with that. That has its place. But the individual, happened to be a nice lady, said, I want the Holy Spirit. I want him in my life, but I don't want to fall out. Well, y'all know what happened. When Bishop laid hands on that lady and she received the Holy Ghost, 
began to speak in tongues. Man, homegirl got wild. <laughs> Fell out on the floor and began to roll, began to scream out and speaking in tongues. One the demon, the God filled her. And while the Holy Ghost is a gentleman, he has to remind us who's Lord. Man, I feel this. So many of us want God on our own terms. And can I dare say, when you strive to have God on your terms, you don't have anything but religion. And a lot of us speak in tongues, jump and shout, but we hold on to parts comfortable. We hold on to parts convenient. We don't want to let God touch it at all. Beloved, at that point, we are in a religion because in order to have relationship, you got to give all. I've been married be 40 years, January 7th, 2024. Man, I thank God for my baby. But one thing, my grandfather, my pastor at the time, and my wife's pastor at the time, when they married us on that 64, 65 degree day, January 4th, 1984, I remember them giving us vows. And um, I've endeavored to keep my vows. I've endeavored, not perfect. None of us are. My wife's not perfect. I'm not perfect. But I tell you, we meant it. And we kept our vows because God kept us. And um, one of the parts of the marriage vow is keeping yourself only to each other as long as you both shall live. I took that as I got to give this woman my all. And I know if she were in here today talking to you, she would say the same thing. I got to give this man my all. Because that was a vow we made before God. And a cloud of witnesses. I think there was about six, eight hundred people in attendance to our wedding that day. Folks standing around the back, standing around the aisles in the back. And uh, church was packed. Mount Zion Apostolic Church, the good pastor, Bishop Edith Mangum, had just built that wonderful church on the corner of Liberty Heights and Rogers. Beautiful church at the time. We were the first wedding. And I still thank God for Bishop Mangum. She said, you don't have to pay me. This is my gift to you. My gift to you and your wife. We use that church for free. Now, I will never forget Bishop Mangum for that. But at that altar, we were the first to get married. And, and, and we declared, you got my all. Y'all excuse me. Want to make sure we had a backdrop. You have my all. That's, that's what we said to each other. Beloved, we're living in a time where we are challenged in giving God our all. Some of us want to reserve some for I don't know what. Some of us single folk want nobody to tell us when to serve, how to serve, when to give, what to give. Because we want to reserve what we want to do when we want to do it. Married folk, same thing. You want to reserve the parts of you you want when you want it and don't want to be told what to do. I remember there was a time, and I'm not getting on anybody, but you would schedule your life around God and the things of God. I realize we're living in a new day. And I understand fussing ain't going to change people's hearts. But it's the way it is, unfortunately. But this way has done us detriment. When you come to God and claim the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it involves your all. Everything must center around him. Everything must revolve around him. My civic responsibilities, my employment, my, my enjoyment, God have mercy. It all must revolve around him. I mean, I know in First Timothy, Paul was writing to his son, his protege, and said, men will be lovers of themselves. 
lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And, and the unfortunate thing is, look at what has got us. Now, please don't turn me off. Hear me. We, we, we got ourselves in trouble seeking what we want to do. We put ourselves in peril seeking what we want to do. We, we, we gave the enemy carte blanche in and out passage of our lives because there's neutrality nowhere when it comes to serving God. You can't walk on both sides at the same time. You got to decide. You got to make a decision. Beloved, I know what I'm saying is considered old school. And some have said, Carrington, you before your time. No, I'm right on time. I'm right in time. I have yet to come full force in everything God put me here to do. So I'm not going to accept that I'm a man before my time. But I'm still seeing things being released. It may have taken a while to get here, but I'm here now. And God got me on a plan. And I'm declaring to you, without equivocation, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and your flesh. You cannot live for the Lord part-time. As much as you want to, as much as somebody lied to you and told you, there is no part-time service in God. Either he's first or he's not at all. Please hear me, please. We get ready to get into a series of lessons talking about how to be kingdom cultured in the midst, midst of a godless culture. Beloved, God is calling us, yes, to be counterculture. And I know a lot of us don't want that. We want to fit in where we get in, get in where we fit in. And we want to be accepted by everything and everybody. And we want to get along to go along. I'm not saying stand on the soapbox, beat your Bible, and condemn folk to hell. But your life, a decision from it has to be made to live for the Lord. All of you, not part of you. Beloved, it's not easy. I am a man of God. And daily I die to myself. Daily. I put my hand over my mouth so I won't say stuff. Daily. I call my thoughts into subjection to the Holy Ghost. Daily. I watch what I watch. I guard what I listen to. It's the price of giving God your all. I don't want to be part-time in God. I don't want to be half-baked, half-offered, half-giving of my life to the Lord. He gave his all. He gave his all. Can I introduce something in this lesson? We owe him. I know many of us don't want to hear that. I mean, some of us have a and I don't want to, nobody feeling bad. Just change. Some of us have a poverty mentality. How do you know you got a poverty mentality? Because you think people should do stuff for you for free out of the kindness of their heart. Folk don't owe you nothing. But we owe God everything. Can you hear me? You cannot make somebody do anything for you in this life, in this flesh. But I'm here to detail to you. Detail how Jesus gave his all. Now, as we enter this lesson, you got to understand this is meat. A mature believer can handle meat because in order to be counterculture, you got to be able to eat meat. You got to be able to survive on meat. Many of us want to be deep. Many of us want to be spiritual. Many of us want to be mystical, but many of us don't want to be surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When you're not submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, you are seeing religion as one thing that all of us should follow. Therefore, folk that are Eurebian princes, Eurebian priests, 
instances can quote unquote ordain an apostle. The devil is a liar. A false religion worshiper cannot ordain a child of God for nothing. Why do we need to go to religion to instruct us in things of righteousness? Now, again, context is important. Jesus said, make of yourselves in the gospels, friends of unrighteous mammon, so that when it fails, they'll receive you into everlasting habitation. Can I quickly deal with that? Some folk have gotten rich by ease because the devil has, quote unquote, empowered them to not miss the good things, quote unquote, of life. There are people that believe if I make a vow to Satan, then I'll never be poor. There are people that believe if I serve the devil, I'll never be broke, busted, and disgusted. But can I tell you, that false Lord has trapped you. And your life is not worth a plug nickel the way it is. Trying to be somebody in nothing is foolish. Satan has nothing to offer you but lies and deception. And so many of us have swallowed it hook, line, and sink. God have mercy on us. It's time for us to make up our mind. We're going to be subjected to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You cannot understand kingdom without that. You cannot understand kingdom without your willing subjectivity to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, look with me at Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Now we're talking about the savior, the indicator that you are kingdom. This is a universal indicator for all believers that I am a subject of the kingdom of God. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 declares from the New King James, the words of Jesus, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Salt without saltiness ain't good for nothing but to be trampled under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Did you hear me what I said? It gives light to all that are in the house. Jesus talking. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Salt, we are. Light, we are. As kingdom citizens, we're all to be salty. Not in the world's definition. We ain't mad, we don't have no attitude. Matter of fact, we sweet in our disposition. But we are still salt. Salt seasons. Salt preserves. We are the preservative of this world. Can I dare say, if believers weren't here, Satan would rule and have havoc in the hearts of men. Things are bad, but can you imagine they could be a lot worse? If we weren't here, they would be. So understand that we are salt and light. Somebody write that in the chat. I am salt and light. Come on, write it. Don't be bashful. I am salt and light. When you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, while we live in this world system, this earth, this existence, we are not part of nor connected 
to the world system. I live here, but I'm not connected to it. I'm here, but I'm not from here. We're resident aliens <laughs> in this world system. When I gave my life to Christ as a believer, I intentionally and I mind what I say, but I'm going to say it with more emphasis. I intentionally become a part of the kingdom of God. Earthly kings and kingdoms pattern after God's government, but are not always submitted to God's government, but they pattern after God's government. I know early civilization, we have Hammurabi's hold, and, and we have all these... Uh, codes, but I'm telling you, all these folk got what they did from God, and they saw how God is sovereign. God is over all, in all, through you all, above you all. That's what the word of God says. God is in charge. If we don't get nowhere else today, we're going to get this. God is sovereign. He is Lord Jesus is Lord, and in order to have a kingdom, you got to have a king. The almighty, sovereign God is the one we are submitted to. The almighty, sovereign God is the one who is the king. Man, I, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to sweat it, <laughs> but I feel the Holy Ghost in this room right now because, beloved, Jesus is Lord. He's Lord of all. And I know you've heard it. I know some have cliched it, but it is the truth. If he is not Lord of all, he cannot be Lord at all. And you don't want that. I don't want life without Jesus being Lord. I often tell people, listen, listen, please. He's the edge. He is the divine edge. He is the one that leads me, guides me, directs me, shows me the way to go. When I don't know something, he knows it. When I can't tell what to do, he knows what to do. When I'm out of sorts and confused, he got all his faculties. And he knows what I should be doing. Bible calls him the one who leads and guides me in all truth. That's the Holy Ghost. And I can't call Jesus Lord unless the Holy Ghost empowers me to. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Don't you feel the presence of God? I do so much. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. He's Lord. Not to ruin your life, not to run your life, not to make your life ratchet, not to do anything, but lead and guide you into all truth. He wants God's absolute best for you, in you and through you. Now I'm sounding like my, my father in the faith, apostle, chief apostle, Monroe Randolph Saunders, uh, junior, senior. Junior sound like his dad too, as my big brother. But God is in us, with us, for us, through us. He wants to be. He wants to be. And, and we got to get back to letting him be Lord. Listen, please. I, I got to get ready to cut off. I told y'all this one day. And we'll pick up next time. But I know that the devil has lied to so many listening to me today. About when the Lord is Lord. You're going to miss this. You're going to miss that. You're going to have this forfeited. You're going to have that forfeited. It's a lie. It's a lie. I have had more fun as a believer. Oh, yeah, I've had struggle. In this world, you shall have tribulation. Jesus told me that. But be of good cheer, he said. I have overcome the world. Again, New King James, my God puts it like this in the Amplified, more so. I have robbed it of its power to harm you. Oh, you got to understand, 
because he's Lord, he has robbed the system of the power to harm me. But I have got to let him be Lord. What's the problem? Come on, come on, look at me. I'm closing. What, what, what's the problem? What, what is the issue of lordship? Why is it so difficult to let Jesus be Lord? I mean, I get depressed, he, he helps me. I, 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 I get confused, he directs me. I get angry, he says, don't sin. With my anger, I mean, I mean, what better help is there than the one who leads, guides you into all truth, not just from outside in, but from inside out. And here we are in the days we're living in as believers. I can't figure it out. Why are we rejecting the Lordship? Oh, the one thing I hate about organized religion is we try capsulize everything instead of just letting jesus be lord we try to make it something that is so difficult because lordship calls for surrender lordship calls for no longer you in charge but god in charge lordship demands subjection and you can't understand kingdom until you understand lordship. Because God is king. The only chief ruler, the only El Elyon, the most high God. Every king has a kingdom. Kingdom is a compound word that is derived through the years from two words. King's domain, king's domain. Every king has a kingdom. God is king. And here are four characteristics of every kingdom, and I close. I'll pick back up with this next week. In a kingdom, the king owns everything in their domain. Did you hear me what I said? Everything. That's why you see when you go to the Bahamas or or maybe not the Bahamas as much on um, any nation in the Caribbean that is still a part of the English Empire, the British Empire. Whose picture you want to see when you come in an airport? Not the prime minister of that land. No, you want to see the picture of the king. Now King Charles. Hmm. Was Queen Elizabeth. You go somewhere now? Love Turks and Caicos. Man, beautiful place. When you land at Turks and Caicos Airport, you are on British territory. And, and, and you must realize you are under British rule visiting that beautiful island. Every king owns his domain. King owns the land. Every person subject to that king in that land. King owns the animals. King owns the wealth. That's why they call it commonwealth. Commonwealth under the king. And the king graciously allows us to live by benefit of it. Every subject, every person is a subject in that kingdom. And abides by the edict and the pleasure of the king. And you talking about the kingdom of God? You talking about kingdom culture? That's something you will never understand until you accept the lordship of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop here because I got more message. I got more midday manner but I'm running out of time. Beloved, we, 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 we in this Western culture, we don't really understand domain. We don't understand kingdom. So you stick with me because we must understand how to be 
kingdom culture in this godless culture. That's the thing we got to understand. Lord, have mercy. Did y'all get something out of this today? Father, I've done what you told me. I've delivered the message. I've delivered the goods. I've opened my mouth to you and I regret nothing. Lord, I've let you have my mouth because it's subjected to you. I've let you have my words because they're subjected to you. Lord, what I want, get the glory out of today. There's somebody listening to me that doesn't love you, doesn't know you, that's having a hard time submitting to your lordship, that still want to hold on to part of the world system and yet be a good Sunday go to meeting Christian. There's somebody who has religion dominating their very psyche, but lordship is nowhere in sight. Lord, I'm praying right now that you let them see. Nobody's questioning their love for you. But we are questioning who's Lord. It is possible to love you and you not be Lord, but that's not enough. I'm asking you, speak to all of our hearts. With this altar call right now, not just the unsaved, but the believer, let us admit we need you. Let us believe that you are the only Savior. You share that spot with none other. And let us commit to follow you and become subject to you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, I've done what you told me. I've declared what you said. And Lord, I challenge everybody listening, the saved and the unsaved. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Is Jesus Lord of your life. Is Jesus Lord of your life? That's really the question. Right now is not heaven or hell. Right now is not rich or poor. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Today you want to make him Lord. We're here, available to you, 443-776-0255. 443-776-0255. Call us. We're here to talk with you. Also, if you want to email us, we answer email. That's lbcministry at yahoo.com. lbcministry at yahoo.com. Then... We have our website, lbcbaltimore.org, lbcbaltimore.org. Those three ways we reach you. Those three ways you can reach us. This streaming ministry is here for your good. Teach, to declare, to give you the word of the Lord. Then you hear his voice. Don't harden your heart. Come to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. Everything you are, come today. Well, beloved, I got to go. I, I, I hate this time, but I know I can't stay all day. I got work to do. Oh, my God. But you let God arise and every enemy be scattered. And you know him. He's with you and not against you. All right? What I pray for is that you join us this Sunday. We'll be virtual, but live. We're not going to be at Pikesville Middle. We're going to be live on YouTube later that day, but live on Zoom and Facebook Live, 10 a.m. Eastern Time, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Join us at worship. Join us. I got a word. Man, I'm in a series. Oh, my God, on Sunday. I started this series on last Sunday. <laughs> Whoa, how to have sanity in an insane world. You got you to gotta tune in this Sunday. Man, I'm, I believe God used me to help you. Don't miss this and stay with us through the word. Got to go. Beloved, I love you. Heaven smile upon you as old timers used to say. Let God arise. 
and all enemies be scattered. God bless. God bless. God bless. And you let God be God in everything. Thank mm -hmm. you.